Welcome to the April ultrasound case of the month. I apologize for the lack of a March case, yet like most of you, March was an interesting time to be a physician practicing the current pandemic. Given the current climate, I decided to slightly alter the format this month. For April, we're not going to discuss a specific patient, but instead we're going to cover what to expect when performing lung ultrasound on COVID patients and why ultrasound might be useful in providing care. The good thing is that imaging of viral pneumonia and ARDS has been well described and lung ultrasound has been well utilized for nearly 20 years. This experience has taught us the sensitivity to ultrasound far surpasses checks x-ray for detecting pneumonia. By this time, I think anyone working clinically is fairly comfortable with what COVID looks like on chest x-ray and CT. But why should you as a frontline provider care about ultrasound in these patients? Ultimately, the decision to perform ultrasound in these patients is based upon a potential benefit to the provider and the patient. This benefit will largely depend upon your physical location and what your practice environment concerning COVID patients currently looks like. Let me be abundantly clear, I am not advocating for lung ultrasound in all COVID patients, yet I do think lung ultrasound gives us another tool. Lung ultrasound provides a method to rapidly assess undifferentiated patients. With the reported peak illness rapidly approaching many parts of the country, we have to start thinking differently about our available resources and workflow. Reliance on imaging and chest x-ray might or has become difficult given expansion into non-traditional spaces. CT utilization has led to shutting down that space for cleaning. Ultrasound provides a tool for completion of physical exam and lung imaging at the same time. Additionally, a small subset of these patients have a cardiomyopathy and a quick personal long view tells us a great deal about the ejection fraction, which again can help us better triage and disposition patients. While lung ultrasound has been around for decades, I realize it's not widely utilized in the U.S. outside of academic centers. With this in mind, I thought a quick review was needed before we tackle COVID ultrasound. Normal lung tissue is filled with air, which is not a good transducer of sound waves. Air tends to scatter sound waves, which inhibits organized information from returning to the probe. This property is utilized when viewing normal lung, because well-aerated slash normal lung will not show anything besides reverberation artifact between the soft tissue and pleura. This reverberation artifact is known as an A-line. The image shown is of a normal lung with clear A-line. Identification of A-lines is helpful because their absence indicates something has changed with the lung. The most common change is when the interstitium of the lung begins to fill with fluid secondary to edema, infection, contusion, or other pathologic states. Instead of being scattered by aerated lung, the sound wave is now transmitted through the abnormal lung. These sound waves get trapped in the tissue and create artifacts called B-lines. These B-lines extend over the entire depth of the image and move with respiratory motion. As more fluid accumulates, the amount of these B-lines increase and can start to coalesce. This beeline appearance is most commonly utilized when evaluating the acute undifferentiated dysmic patient, specifically edema secondary to CHF exacerbation versus COPD. Edema associated with heart failure tends to be diffuse, as you can imagine given the pathophysiologic process. For clinical significance, the literature describes greater than two beelines per lung zone. For purposes of lung ultrasound, the lung is divided into zones. To utilize this in clinical practice, I think this needs to be as simple and efficient as possible. I recommend dividing each hemothorax into six zones. Utilize the convex or curvilinear probe to lawnmower represented by the teal line in zone 2 across each zone. Given preliminary data from China and Italy, the posterior and inferior lung is likely the highest yield location of scan. Once comfortable with this exam, the entire exam should only take a few minutes. Now that we understand the basics, we can appreciate that B lines represent pathology. B-lines are seen in patients with COVID involvement of the lungs, yet they tend to be unique when compared to classic B-lines seen in pulmonary edema associated with fluid overload and CHF. B-lines in COVID are part of a diffuse interstitial syndrome. If you have looked at an X-ray or CT of a COVID patient, you understand why the B-lines are scattered and found with normal lung tissue between the pathologic lung. Additionally, there tends to be subpleural abnormalities, which we will show you momentarily. Before I show real-time video of ultrasounds from our COVID patients in Indianapolis, I wanted to highlight this amazing article out of China. It is great because they show CT cross-sections and then ultrasounds in the same location. By reviewing these upcoming slides, I think it gives a great preliminary understanding of the pathology identified with ultrasound. This CT shows the classic ground glass appearance. The ultrasound shows pathologic B lines represented by the red arrows. The usual bright and smooth pleural line is now jagged and irregular. In this CT image, the lung pathology has become more concentrated with an increase in lung density. The B lines become more concentrated and diffuse rather than the spotlight appearance noted in the previous image. This view of the ultrasound is important 
because it shows a great example of subplural consolidation represented by the red arrows. We can see the irregularity of the pleural with the subpleural hypoechoic area. I think this image is great to understand disease progression. With classic pneumonia, the lung gets socked in with inflammatory cells and fluid. There is collapse and the lung becomes dense. On ultrasound, this is known as hepatization of the lung, since it starts to look like liver. Here we see this on CT, and we can still see air bronchograms within this consolidation. This air is seen on ultrasound is represented by the bright white areas within the hepatization pattern, represented by the yellow arrows. For the remainder of the slides, I'm going to present numerous images scanned locally showing both COVID and non-COVID patients in order to exemplify the acute interstitial syndrome found in these patients, which is unique in comparison to normal lung or other pathologic conditions. In this COVID image, we clearly see abnormalities. The bright pleural line is visualized with B lines originate from the subpleural hypochoic area. This is a good example of subpleural consolidation with an irregular pleural line. In this COVID patient, we see normal lung tissue on the left of the image, represented by A lines. In the middle of the image, we see pathologic B lines that originate from the abnormal subpleural consolidation. This is a great example of the concept of scattered B lines since pathology is interspersed amongst normal lung tissue. This image was obtained in a patient with worsening dyspnea. After this image and farther questioning, a clear diagnosis of pulmonary edema secondary to CHF exacerbation was given. Compared to the scattered B lines in the last image, these B lines are diffuse. We can see them originating from every pleural surface. For those new to lung ultrasound, the dark artifacts are from shadowing from the ribs. This image should be easily identified as normal lung tissue. We see no pathologic B lines and can clearly see A lines, which are normal reverberation artifacts. This image could easily be seen in a COVID patient and represents the importance of scanning each zone and the area contained within each zone to evaluate for pathology. As the COVID disease process advances, B lines become more numerous and can start to coalesce. This view also shows abnormal appearance of pleural line and subpleural consolidation. The coalescing B lines in this view are more diffuse, and one could state they look similar to B lines with pulmonary edema. However, the abnormalities at the pleura should not be present with acute pulmonary edema from a cardiogenic process. Additionally, by scanning multiple zones, one should be able to confidently differentiate a diffuse B line pattern seen in pulmonary edema versus a more scattered B line appearance seen with diffuse interstitial syndrome. Here's a classic example of bacterial pneumonia with air bronchograms. We can see the lung has started to take on a liver-like appearance and the bright white areas within this are air-filled bronchioles. While this is a classic appearance of organized pneumonia and severe consolidation, it can also be seen with COVID patients with extreme disease progression. For our last image, I will leave you with another COVID lung ultrasound. Here we can see the pathology come in and out of frame with respiratory and diaphragmatic movement. We can see coalescing B lines on the right of the screen and normal lung tissue with A lines on the left of the screen. Here's a quick summary slide you can use as reference if needed. It is good because it succinctly summarized the findings that are being noted in COVID patients. While the previous slide is great, I think there are two main takeaway points. One of these is that the scattered diffuse appearance of B lines intermixed amongst normal lung tissue. To understand this, all you need to do is look at a CT scan of these patients and appreciate normal lung tissue alongside disease tissue. Additionally, the majority of other lung processes don't have the subpleural abnormalities, which we have reviewed in the COVID ultrasounds. As I stated before, how you utilize this information will depend on your current environment and practice. Yet given the current pandemic, I for one like to have multiple options and tools available in assisting me to take better care of my patients. Thank you for watching and a particular heartfelt thank you to everyone on the front lines during this. Stay safe and continue providing great care for your patients. As always, email me with any questions or concerns.